Thank you to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be kind of a continuation from Wednesday's video where I did a little bit of, I would consider kind of like brain dumping or sketching for kind of like a concept or an idea for a future illustration, which we are going to be tackling today of Don Hung. And it's in particular the, I don't know how you say the word, imbibitor, imbibitor, Im hmm, imbibitor lune, I think, is how you might be able to pronounce the, his form, I guess, kind of more of the dragon-esque kind of form that Don Hung takes um, according to the more recent progression in the story. So I'm not going to do any spoilers or anything like that too, too much. So we will just go ahead and get started with the actual drawing. So to start off, I am going to be starting with the rough sketch and the pose that I chose was actually from one of the sketches that I did from Wednesday's video. So if you want something to draw along with in real time, and I do have a timer for it for about one hour, so you can draw along with that footage if you like. But if not, um, you don't have to watch that video in order to understand today's video. It just kind of gives you a little bit more insight on why I chose to do the things I did for the sketch. and. Yeah, I'm doing the top right sketch and I'm basically trying to translate that and trying to kind of flesh it out a little bit more once we get into the actual cleaner sketch. But for now, I'm just going to block in the body and kind of figure out the composition just a little bit just because when I was doing these sketches from Wednesday, I didn't really think about the composition too much. I didn't plan out like a canvas portion, like canvas size, I guess, or kind of think about where the borders would be. So I kind of just let myself sketch kind of willy nilly. But for today, I am going to basically resize and shuffle around the figure alongside with the background whenever I need to. So right here, I'm kind of just planning out, do I want a crescent moon, a full moon, and how do I want Don Hong to be illuminated? Because I kind of want a night scene. I want water present. And then I want basically him to be illuminated by a very bright kind of cooler toned moon so that's kind of like the premise of today's drawing so after i finished the rough sketch i dim down the sketch to a very low opacity i make a new layer and we can actually continue sketching and kind of fleshing out actually like the figure and the face and everything else that i need to draw out before we can get to background coloring or coloring in general so for me I still add in a fair amount of my guidelines when I do this kind of cleaner sketch or kind of more my detailed sketch compared to the rough one. But the rough kind of helps me give a good guideline to where I want to place things. But I will shuffle things either during this sketching portion or I'll do it once I realize it during the coloring portion. So I'm not going to be too stuck with what I have here, but it's still a good guideline for me when I need to kind of plan stuff out by doing it with a larger brush so that I don't feel too tempted with making smaller details and going to detail too quickly. So yeah, I just want to make sure that's kind of more implemented during this kind of sketching phase where I'm working with a much smaller brush and I have more like kind of sketchy and streakier lines where I can kind of play around with um, smaller details rather than just chunking them in. Now, I know I didn't really draw his earring correctly. I think in the, I think his light cone and in the actual like trailer or the official uh, introduction for him, or I'm, I'm just gonna refer to him as Don Hung. I'm not gonna refer to him as anything else. So I do apologize if it gets a little confusing, but I believe the details on the earring is much more, um, I don't know, a little bit prettier, a little bit more detailed compared to how I drew it. I am basing it off of the official artwork and some, I think, compilations or like compiled uh, screenshots or somehow they have access to the model at the time and they did basically like a turnaround and they are able to separate like certain parts and enlarge them so I was kind of using that as a reference to make sure that I have for the most part a lot of his details somewhat correctly 
Another thing that I wanted to plan out is that I wanted to create a little bit of wind or movement with his hair just because he does have a lot more kind of like flowier loose ends of his hair so I want that to kind of create a little bit more movement a little bit of more of that swooshy kind of silhouette that we can use to I don't know, show a little bit more movement from that alongside with I'm gonna add petals and a little bit of water as well just because I feel like that's like a running theme for him so I feel like that fits a little bit better compared to just like random petals in the, in the sky or whatever. One thing I did forget to add and maybe I'll do a different illustration. I wanted to add like lotus flowers into the water, but it totally slipped my mind right now. Well, up until now, I guess. So maybe in the future, I'll do something with that. Maybe I can do something similar to the third sketch that I did from Wednesday's video, where he looks like he's at like an edge of a pond or edge of some kind of surface where he's kind of emerging out of the water. Maybe I can put like lotus flowers behind him or something. I think it'll look really pretty. Because one thing I really love about his, I don't know if it's his normal attack on the like actual world. He actually creates like a lotus flower kind of thing that kind of bursts, which looks super, super pretty. So I would love to draw Don Hung kind of in this form, in his normal form a lot more. Just because I think he might be my favorite character from Honkai Star Rail like in general. Just for now at this point, but I do love Don Hung's character quite a bit. But in terms of other references that I was using, I think the official reference or official artwork plus the kind of like turnaround screenshot of the model or whatever was the only ones I really used. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think later on when we actually do the coloring of the background, I will show you guys my phone because I had Pinterest open with a bunch of different... Uh, I think all I searched was water into Pinterest to see what I would get so I could figure out how I wanted to either do droplets, do I want to do ripple effects, do I want to do just like a watery kind of reflect reflective surface? And I was trying to figure that out when I was doing the background. So eventually I will pull that up as well. But for the most part, I didn't really use too much reference for this particular piece, which might uh, be an issue as I feel like his body and anatomy might be very much incorrect. I am going to shuffle his neck later on once I do, I think, the rough coloring and the sketch is finished. So I do apologize that it kind of looks a little bit chunky and a little weird how his neck and his kind of face jawline kind of area is portrayed. So I kind of wish I noticed it, noticed it earlier, but um, I did not. So I do apologize that he might look a little bit weird right now. Mm, I don't really draw too many people from like the turning back view. I think the only other time that I've really done it was a Candace drawing. So that's Candace from Genshin Impact. But I feel like I also didn't really do her justice. I think the color scheme and the lighting and the general coloring looks pretty. But for that one, her, her face and her neck compared to the rest of her body looks kind of broken in a way. But I think for the most part, we're reaching pretty much the end of the actual sketching portion. So once I finish the sketching portion, I will actually kind of explain a little bit more about the coloring and the background before we actually color Don Hung himself. So now that the sketch for Don Hung is done, let's take a quick break. I wanted to let you guys know more about Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Experience Japan from the comfort of your own home with their beautifully packed snack boxes. The boxes designs for this month are so so cute. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box with 20 of the latest exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time like Sakura Pepsi, Japanese Sake Kit Kat, Ramen, and many more. The boxes are always so well packaged and filled with so many yummy snacks that range from sweet to savory, crunchy to soft, and many new snacks to choose from. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, Sakura Co. supports local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. For this month's box, it has included this adorable bunny dish. It has a mixture of a nice glossy texture in the center and a matte texture around the rim. It's super pretty and super cute. 
both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks in the box. It also includes cultural information relating to that month and the location. It includes information regarding each snack like allergies, preparation instructions, and even if the snack is vegetarian friendly. Each month has a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treats box theme for the month of September is Moon Festival Snacking, while Sakura Ko's theme for the month of September was the Autumn Moon Festival, which is perfect timing. Chestnut is kind of like a common treat eaten during around the full moon festival. Tsukimi, which is a Japanese moon viewing festival, is celebrated in autumn and is a century old tradition that celebrates the time to appreciate the beauty of the autumn moon and gives thanks to harvest. I highly recommend reading about the origins of the rabbit pounding mochi on the moon. I think it's a cute story and origin on why they are associated with the moon during this time of the year. So to kind of accompany with some of the snacks, I like to try out the tea that came in the Sakura Co box every time. I think that they usually pair super well with the snack selection. And if you're not super fan of like sweets, it helps kind of cut that sweetness a little bit. The tea for Sakura Co, which is in this bag, is the Hatomugi tea. It is a caffeine-free tea that is cultivated in Totori using a variety of leaves to undergo a unique germination process. It results in kind of like a mellow and fresh tea that also offers indulgence and skin nourishing benefits. It also has this very nice toasted flavor from the pearl barley. I think this might be one of my favorite teas that I've had tried from their boxes. I always like those kind of herbal teas that have that nice kind of toasted or roasted flavor in them and this is definitely checking those boxes. I tried a lot of the smaller snacks this time as they're a little bit easier for me to eat at my desk while I work. The white chocolate fruit strawberry was kind of very surprising, but definitely one of my favorites. It is apparently made by having it artfully soaked each strawberry in white chocolate. I thought that it would have kind of like a freeze dried kind of strawberry texture, but it was kind of like a nice in between of a strawberry and white chocolate. I'm like a super big fan of black sesame flavor. I can never really go wrong with mochi either. So the black sesame mochi was also a very tasty and one of my favorites from the box. The chestnut flavor Kit Kat also had a very nice sweet flavor that isn't too chestnutty. It's kind of a little bit more subdued, but very tasty as well. I love mint chocolate, so the little mint chocolate moon pebbles as well were super cute, but also very enjoyable to eat and kind of nice as a little like refresher for myself as well. If you like to get a box for yourself or want to give these as a lovely gift to friends and family, then definitely check out the links in the description to get your snacks today. I think that they would be a great gift for people, especially since the mid-autumn festival is kind of right around the corner. Thank you again to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to working on that. Okay, so now that the sketch is finished, I'm going to go ahead and kind of reorganize my layers. I like to duplicate my sketch layer and set one to multiply, while the other one is kind of hidden just in case I want to recolor this one for whatever reason. But then after that, I'll make a new layer right under my sketch so we can actually do the painting portion for the background. So for the background, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, I have some references of what I think I just searched up water into Pinterest and it gave me a bunch of different images of either like water droplets, water textures, waves, ripples, whatever you want. And I was looking a lot at different like ripples and then later on I'm gonna look at different water textures a little bit like droplets, waves and stuff because I do want a little bit of kind of like swooshing water going across where kind of like behind his back to where his arms are and it's gonna create a little bit more of that majestic feel hopefully and I do want it so that it kind of creates a little bit more of a border for where Dan Hung is kind of like encasing him almost kind of curving it in such a way that you kind of get led back into his face and I just like the overall movement of how the water is so yeah, we'll talk about that once we get to more of the foreground elements because it will be in front of Don Hung, but right now I'm working on the background. So for the background, I do have him kind of settled into kind of like a pond of water or a lake or whatever you want to think this body of water is. And then in the back, I wanted it to be majority kind of like this monochromatic blue color. I do have kind of these darker grays in the back 
that kind of depict some kind of land or rocks in the back or some kind of I don't know, something to break up the sky and the water because I want them to be somewhat similar in color just for the overall piece, but I don't want them to be too close where you can't differentiate which is the sky and which is the water. So to break that up, I'm putting in some kind of like mountain or rock figure uh, things to kind of break up that line. So we kind of have like a horizon line and just something to visually break up those two different spaces. and. I forgot to add some more shapes into the background that kind of give more of an atmospheric perspective. I think at some point I just jump into drawing clouds instead of fixing the background completely. I've also drawn the kind of rock formations on one layer with the rest of the background which was kind of a mistake because I wanted to tackle um, fiddling with the sky a little bit more easily. And it would have been easier for me to separate the background into the actual background color and then anything kind of like moving forward from the background to the foreground in order to have their own separate layers so that I could easily shuffle things around or draw things underneath one another. But for me, I just decided to fill in the top half with a color, locked it, and then I redid the sky a little bit to have a different kind of gradient. And then I went ahead and started to add in the clouds. So for the clouds, I kind of wanted to add them in last minute just because I felt that if I just added the moon, it might be a little bit too plain and a little bit too... How to explain? I don't know. I feel like the sky would have looked too empty with just the moon and just like some weird kind of vignetted gradient at the top where it goes from light in the center where the moon would be and then we get gradually darker around it. So I definitely wanted to add a little bit of clouds that will kind of obstruct the moon shape as well. I am going to blur a big chunk of this and I will blur the entire piece at the end anyways. So I'm not going to be too precious with the details, but I was trying to play around a little bit with some of the depth here and for the moon. So in my previous sketch that I did in Wednesday's video, I was kind of debating whether or not I was going to do a crescent moon or just a normal full moon. So the crescent moon I feel like will just look pretty in general and it would have like created a different shape for kind of what would stand out for Don Hung. So because Don Hung's hair is quite dark, I didn't want to have the background be too dark as well to blend with his hair so I decided that I would just go with a full moon I'll just add some texture so it doesn't read as a giant circle in the sky so that we could kind of I don't know make the moon a little bit more interesting but also helps kind of make sure that Don Hung's hair is not going to be lost in the sky because I wasn't sure how dark I was going to make Don Hung's hair compared to the rest of the background so I might struggle a little bit with that and I can't tell with this screen or my iPad screen or my phone screen which one has the most accurate color. So I do apologize that if some things might be hard to see via my camera versus what the actual colors look like to me or what I see on the iPad. But once we do like the time lapse and I put the final image at the end, you'll be able to see that a little bit more clearly. So I feel like this might be looking a little bit too vibrant or maybe in even too highly contrasted that you're not able to differentiate where the darks are and the lights are because there are a little bit of like shifts in values here and there but the whites get very blown out and even like any color that's just on the lighter side of the value get blown out quite a bit so it might be a little bit hard to view and I'm gonna try my best to kind of switch in and out between my brightnesses so that you can see kind of the the black of Dunhung's hair versus like the rim lighting of the background, they're going to be hard to see at different lighting situations. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so for the coloring portion for Dunhung, I decided to set his sketch to reference. So the reference layer so that when I decide to sketch or bucket any color, we're referencing the sketch while being on a separate layer. So I decided to fill it in this way by blocking in Don Hoon completely by using the selection tool and then inverting it. After inverting, invert, inverting it, yes, 
I decided to just fill it in with a giant brush so that we can just fill in Don Hung very quickly. I just have to make sure that in the end, I will have to basically clean up the edges so that it doesn't have those weird pixely kind of really sharp edges. I kind of want things to look a little bit more smooth and a little bit softer around the edges anyways, so it kind of works out. But it's easier for me to color this way because I don't really want to toggle the background on and off while I'm working. And I did this very similar to how I drew Fremine as well. And coloring it in in one kind of bolder color and then coloring the sections that I need to by alpha locking it so that I don't accidentally color outside of the blue area makes it just much quicker for myself. And I've already decided similar to the Fremine piece that I will just color as normal for the most part and trying to keep in mind where the lighting is going to be. But then I will be using multiply and overlay and addition layer as well to kind of pull the entire color scheme together for Don Hung and self. Just because I don't really want to think about oh, what does the skin look like under a blue lighting? And I'm going to have to slowly adjust things. I'm just going to do it all at once at the very end, just because I don't want to give myself a headache on figuring out the colors, even though it would be good practice to do so. Um, just like eyeballing colors or picking colors that look well together or understanding the environment would just be good practice overall. But I am going to be lazy and I'm going to just color as normal and then we can play around with the effect layers or the blend mode layers, I guess, and just easily kind of change the overall temperature of Don Hung all at once so that he kind of fits into the cooler, darker kind of background. But you can see like while I'm shading or coloring, I'm trying my best to keep in mind where the values are or trying to make sure that things are lighter where they should be and darker in some other areas so that, you know, when I do add, like end up adding a lot of the overlays, multiply or anything of those other layers, they don't get too uh, lost in terms of, or not lost, I don't want those layers to really push and pull the different um, values or anything like that for me. I want to be able to establish that first. I think it might be also easier for some people. Alongside, I feel like it would be easier for me, but I'm just lazy to work with many layers whenever I work on Procreate or I'm working kind of like in this particular method to kind of separate different chunks of areas into separate layers so that you don't have to redo the coloring over and over again so you know how like it would be Don Hun's like Don Hung's skin and then he would have clothing on top and then you would put hair on top because the hair is more in the foreground compared to the rest of his body and it would be much easier to keep things cleaner if I you know color the skin make a new layer color the clothing make a new layer color the hair but for some reason I just like painting all in one layer if I can just because I can just easily erase things that I need or cover things that I need without having to remember, oh, this layer is on the top. Therefore, if I want to cover it, I have to make a new layer. Or like if I want to erase this particular color, I have to go back to that other layer as well. Okay, so uh, for this part, I am making sure that I'm kind of fixing up some of the values um, before we actually start to finish up everything else. I'm also making sure to change my sketch lines before I merge my layers together. So right now I have my sketch basically alpha locked so, and then I'm going to erase any of the stray lines, but I'm also going to be coloring in the lines itself so that I could make them match closer to certain areas of Dan Hung's body or his clothing. And then for some other areas like the clothing that are kind of more into dark areas, I'm making sure that those lines are going to be much darker because if there's no color underneath and you kind of merge down the layer to the layer below, you basically loses its effect if there's nothing underneath that is helping contribute to that effect. I don't know if that makes sense. You can kind of play around with it probably to make better sense of it. So right now I am adding a multiply layer to Don Hung and you can see that this is quite dark. It kind of fits into the atmosphere, but it's not my favorite. I am going to adjust it so that it's gonna be more of a bluish green color. And you can see that for the rim lighting this time, I am basically just erasing where the multiply is because I did keep in mind for the most part where I kept the highlights 
prior to doing the multiply layer to put him all in shadow. Now, if I really wanted to, and I think I do in the very end, is that I am going to basically kind of like add an extra highlight if I really need to. And I'll do that by adding an addition layer and then doing a little bit of rim lighting. And if I need to, I will knock it back to wherever I need it to be so that it's not at maximum full like intensity because at max, it tends to be almost white, if anything. So I know it's really hard to see on my iPad, but you can see that I have this multiply layer. I merged it down. I also have my, I guess this is my rim lighting. I did do an extra rim lighting and it's set to add. And you can see that it looks very, very bright. And that's partially because my iPad is having a hard time picking up the, I guess the contrast between my darks and my lights, depending on what my iPad is set to. So one last thing I like to do, and sometimes I do this at the very end when I finish rendering everything, or I do this prior to merging everything, is that I add a extra overlay layer to adjust a little bit of the color temperature. Sometimes it's making the face a little bit warmer, or if things are in shadow, I would add more of a bluish tone or bluish color, I guess, or hue, so that we can kind of change and shift the color temperature very subtly. I just think like sometimes it helps a little bit with the color vibrancy and for me I do like having vibrant colors even though I feel like it's not necessary in every situation it's just something that I prefer whenever I color um but yeah I think that's it for the I guess like prepping for the rendering phase so we have our coloring out of the way I changed the sketch lines to match the coloring a little bit more appropriately then after that I have added any kind of blend modes or effect layers like multiply overlay addition to kind of adjust the lighting and the color temperature so that he fits more better into his environment. After that, I have now moved on to the actual rendering portion. So for the rendering portion, I basically switched brushes to a more sharper brush and I kind of kind of really shrink down the size of the brush so that we can kind of get into the nitty gritty details of certain areas. So I'm sharpening a lot of the areas, I'm cleaning up a lot of those sketchy lines, and kind of like going back and forth with painting over and drawing over different things to make sure that, oh, maybe I like it with a harsher line, maybe I want to buff it out to make it softer. It's kind of like a push and pull between the two. and. Basically, this is like the most longest and tedious part for me. And, but let me think. I was gonna say something else, but I feel like I should probably just say this in general. I do like this piece of downhorn quite a bit. I know there's some things that are gonna look off, but similar to like the Fremenet piece and just like my overall outlook on creating and drawing art at the moment, I've been enjoying the process a little bit more again. And I feel like the finished process, like finish, illustrations and just like the end product is a little bit up to what I would like it to be in terms of oh I finished it rather than like oh I feel like I'll just finish it and I might be very lukewarm towards my opinion about the illustration but just like living with it because I wanted to finish it whether it was for a deadline or because I don't want to do like kind of kind of continue with the piece anymore so I do have a few pieces that probably i could revisit because i've low-key almost not like exactly abandoned them but i did stop working on them there's one of Remu and selene i think it's like a driving kind of in them in a car which i would love to finish um at some point i still have um nouvellette as well to finish and i don't know i feel like maybe I will make a short for him or we'll do a time-lapse version for him because he's kind of like I'm starting on the rendering phase for his drawing so a, a big chunk of the actual drawing portion or the process has not been recorded so I'm not too sure how I would like to display that for you guys so we'll see if I make a short out of it Oh, maybe I should have talked about that before, but let me explain a little bit more about the rendering. So a lot of the times I also choose just darker colors in general and darken up light corners or any 
place where two lines meet they kind of create a little bit more depth but then as we move away from those two lines where they meet sometimes i let them fade and they become a lot softer and i do that a lot with like character's hair pieces or anything like that that have like locks or kind of just sharper edges at the very end so that we can kind of give an illusion of kind of it having softer edges but i still like the contrast where it's not too lost and getting blended into the skin if that makes sense but let me get back on track so the thing i wanted to talk about as well is shorts so i think i mentioned in maybe a previous live stream or two that i had no intentions of making shorts at all but i decided that i would make shorts for illustrations that i enjoy the process of because i feel like one day i'm gonna start deleting my time lapses off my ipad again for whatever reason or i want an easier way to access my full process or progress of a piece and i feel like shorts is still a good way of doing that i just don't feel like i'm the type of person who likes to doing the different kind of formats that are very either like one click baity i don't want to do like short tutorials on there either um i think i'm just gonna stick with a particular format for now or do some that just show the process in a very short form by chunking the different uh the different steps and i initially wanted to do it for like traditional medium but i haven't found a good format on how i wanted to film it because filming on my phone is a bit of a pain uh just because my hand is shaky and i'm bad at multitasking if i'm holding like you know trying to make sure that the recording is in focus in one hand and then drawing with the other hand i feel like it's a little bit of a struggle for me to balance the two so i kind of want to make sure that either i need to get a phone stand properly set up or i can just keep swapping my phone holder thing with my webcam which that's what i've been doing for the recent shorts and just making sure that's aligned properly but I might have to delete some space for my phone because I don't know if I can record anything too, too long. But I don't know. Uh, I will see what I'll upload for shorts in the future. But for now, it's kind of more of a a log for myself at this point. Because I really did love that Fremenay piece. And I feel like maybe in the future I'll do one for this Donhung piece. Because I do think the end result looks pretty. I'm not too sure if I am 100% satisfied. But... It is a piece that I feel like I do like of Dan Hung compared to the previous ones that I've done. Because I've done like, I think three drawings of him. And I have not been satisfied of how I've drawn his face or his demeanor or any of the concepts or anything like that. So I, I don't know. There is another one where I've done for a live stream, which you guys who went to the live stream have considered it him doing looks like he's showering in leaves if that makes sense because he looks like he's like shampooing his hair but there's like leaves around him and stuff so i would like to fiddle around with that one to see if i can fix it or yeah i feel like maybe that one nouvellette and the selene remu one maybe i'll do another like keep me company as i finish up some drawing type of video with those ones maybe i don't know I, I don't want to fully abandon those ones, so I do want to continue, especially like the new Villette one. I did post like whips of it, I think on Instagram and on Twitter, so I would like to continue that one too, because overall I do think it looks really pretty. I just feel like I haven't had the time to fully commit to finishing and rendering that piece. Oh, I also missed kind of like Don Hung's hair accessory, hair clip, so I made a new like a new layer. I decided to draw the accessory as I see it and then I kind of adjusted it with the selection and the, the distort tool that it has and then I merged it back onto Don Hung's hair afterwards and put a strand in front of it so that it doesn't look too out of place. Also, I changed up his arm on the right side of the canvas as it's no longer like fully straight into the water. I decided to kind of outstretch it a little bit more to the side with the rest of kind of like his overall pose. So it's a little bit more even and a little bit less weirdly stiff for that one arm. And luckily, um, the way how I have the water splashing and curving kind of covers up the hand and the other arm a little bit more. Because I feel like 
both sides of those were a little bit more of the weaker sides both in when I drew it and as when I was rendering it because I didn't really take the time to do it properly but now uh, we are basically approaching the end I finished pretty much rendering Don Heung. I also put back in the water droplets or the kind of water surrounding him and I'm placing in the petals so that we can create a little bit more movement and I do like the kind of like trail of petals to kind of add a little bit more places of light because I am going to make them glow and it might be a little bit hard to see at this point so hopefully you'll be able to see it at the end. I am going to add a little bit more warmth to some of those leaves by adding a little bit more of a golden color, a golden hue, and a little bit of green into them rather than just like that pure punchy blue which is like evident in the rest of this entire piece. Uh, a little bit of glow, I'll knock it back, but I feel like this looks kind of pretty like this, so yeah, I just, I'm just having fun with drawing again, so it's kind of nice that I feel like I'm not too bogged down about drawing anymore, like I was for the last, I think, three-ish weeks, which kind of sucks, but for the most part, I really like this one and the one I did of Fremenet. And hopefully you guys will see the one of New Villette eventually in whatever form I decided to post them in. But I think that's it for Don Hung though. I decided to add one more kind of water droplet into the very front to create more depth by blurring it extremely. Uh, but then after that, I decided to uh, copy and paste the entire thing. I blend, or not blend it, I Gaussian blurred it all and then erased closer to his face and the rest of his body and left everything else quite blurred so that we can kind of create a little bit more of that effect where we can get Don Hung to be more in focus than the rest of the actual illustration. So here is the time lapse for the Don Hung piece. You can see the some of the little edits or the liquefying that I did for his body and his face. But I think that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's illustration and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!